let's see how to install Ubuntu Server 22.04 on VirtualBox. The first thing that we're going to do is open the web browser and head over to ubuntu.com. And in the top of the website, we have this menu and let's choose download. And we want Ubuntu Server, so let's choose get Ubuntu Server. Now the recommended way to get Ubuntu Server is using Multipass, on which I did a video in the past. So if you're interested in Multipass, go and watch that video, I leave a link in the video description. Anyway, in this video, we're going to install Ubuntu Server directly on VirtualBox, so we're going to choose the second option, Manual Server Installation. And let's download Ubuntu Server 22.04. And it's been downloaded. Great, it was downloaded, and if we look at our downloads folder, we can see it over here, Ubuntu server.iso. Let's now open VirtualBox itself, and let's create a new virtual machine. We need to give the new virtual machine a name, so I'll just call it Ubuntu server. And you can see that according to the name that I chose, VirtualBox guest, that is going to be a Linux virtual machine, and the version is going to be Ubuntu. And this guess is correct, of course. Now, if you chose some other name, this guess might be wrong, so just change it yourself and make sure that the type is Linux and that the version is Ubuntu. Once that's done, let's click on Next. We now need to decide how much memory we want to allocate to the virtual Ubuntu server. Generally speaking, the more memory you're going to give it, the better it will run. But make sure that you stay within the green zone. In my case, the computer itself has about 8 GB of RAM, so the maximum amount of memory that I can allocate to the virtual machine is about half of it, about 4 GB. But I'll just go with about 2 GB, which should be enough. And again, I'm making sure that it's within the green zone. We need to create a virtual disk. And I'll go with the VDI format, which is the VirtualBox disk image format. Here I'm going to choose dynamically allocated, which means that the virtual disk is not going to be allocated up front, but will grow as the virtual machine actually needs more space. And here we're going to set the limit to which this virtual disk can grow. If in the previous step you chose fixed size, that's how much will be allocated up front, but since we chose dynamically allocated, that's just the limit, the maximum value it can grow to. I'll go with 15 gigabytes. Okay, so the virtual machine was created. We now need to insert the ISO file to the virtual optical drive. So let's click on this optical drive over here. And we're going to choose a disk file. So the file was in the downloads folder, so let's go there. And here it is, Ubuntu 22.04 server. We can also allocate more processors to the virtual machine, and to do that we're going to click on System, and under Processor, I'm going to increase the processor allocation from 1 to 2. Ok, let's start our virtual machine. And I'm going to choose the first option, Try or Install Ubuntu Server. We need to choose a language, I'll go with English. And here we can update the installer itself. It doesn't really matter, so I'm not going to do it, and I'll just continue without updating. We can change the keyboard layout, I'll just go with English US. Here we can choose either Ubuntu Server or Ubuntu Server Minimized. I strongly recommend that you go with the first option, as the second one, the Minimized option, is missing some important tools that you're probably going to want. So I'll just go with the first option, Ubuntu Server. And we can see that the Ubuntu Server got its IP address, which is great and means that it's going to have connectivity. If you're using a proxy, enter its address over here, but I'm not using one, so I leave it blank. And now we need to enter the mirror address from which Ubuntu will be updated. By default it's going to choose the one that's nearest to your location, which is usually fine. 
I'm going to use the entire disk. Don't worry, nothing bad is going to happen to the files on your physical disk. The only disk the virtual machine is aware of is the virtual one which we just allocated. So using the entire virtual disk for Ubuntu server won't clash with the files you have on your physical disk, so it's completely safe and this is what I'm going to choose. I don't want to use logical volumes, so I'm going to uncheck this option by clicking on space. And that's it. And all of the changes to the virtual disk are summed up here, and you can see that new partitions are going to be created on it, and it's going to be used entirely. It's okay. So let's continue. We need to enter a name. We need to name our server. And we also need a username and a password. We can use the OpenSSH server, which is really useful for servers, and it's a small program. So let's install it. So I'm going to press on space again. And you can see a long list of programs that are popular for servers. I don't want any of them right now, so I won't choose any. So let's press on tab and done. The installation is taking place. Let's wait for it to finish. And the installation is finally done. Let's choose Reboot now. And we need to remove the installation medium, then press Enter. So let's head over to the VirtualBox Manager. And we can see under Storage that the optical drive is already empty, which means that VirtualBox already removed the ISO file for us. So we're good, let's get back to the virtual machine. And press Enter. And once it loads, press enter, then you can enter your username and your password. And we're logged in and the Ubuntu server is ready to use.